Well, hello everybody and welcome to a video that, well, I don't know quite what it's going to be and I have everything I, we need to figure out what it's going to be on the table today. This might be a repair video, but this might just be a look inside video because I picked up this Panasonic tape recorder, which we'll talk about in just a minute, and we're going to have a look inside in it in a minute and if it needs repairing, I will repair it. If it does not need repair, which I suspect it probably doesn't, then we'll just have a look inside and see how it works. I should say, I have this here. This is definitely a, a, vo a voice recorder of the, um, the late 70s, early to mid 80s era, and we can try to see how old it is when we have a look at it in sign. I notice it says IC on it, which means presumably that it has an integrated circuit in it somewhere. The fact that they've labeled it like that, I think, speaks favorably to the late 70s or early 80s as its period, possibly the 70s. But we'll see when we have a look inside. I just brought this now, I don't know how old that is, maybe even a decade old little Sony voice recorder, which represents what this has been replaced with. Um, the current Sony models don't function terribly differently, although they're a bit faster. And then I have what we need to test this, which are a couple of tapes and a blank cassette to see if recording works on it and of course some batteries. So I'm just going to pull this stuff all away, reposition the tape player and, uh, and put the batteries in it and then we'll see what we've got. I do also want to spend some time talking about how I buy something like this and why I chose to buy this tape player instead of you know some of the other stuff that was available. I will say I like to post these kinds of videos about once a week and if you do like these sorts of videos you should consider subscribing to my channel and hopefully I'll have them up, you know, just about once every week or two depending on my schedule and what I can find. So let me do that repositioning and I will be right back. Okay, so now we have the cassette recorder in front of us and we can look at what it has. So it's a recorder, there's the record function, it won't work because the um, the, the, the mechanical interlock prevents recording from working on these machines and if you have the record tab broken on your cassette tape. These are the record tabs. For those of who are not used to the cassette era, those, if you break those little tabs off, you can't record on it. And if you buy a pre-recorded tape, apologies for that, you'll notice that the, those little copy protect tabs are gone. You can, of course, replace them with a piece of tape if you want to. Um, so it, that won't work absent a tape being in it. We could put a tape in it, right? And if we hit record now, it's recording, but there's no tape there. That's the pause. That's actually interesting. It's eject and pause, but then stop, and the, and the purpose of this changes, and now it ejects the tape. That's pretty nice. Panasonic's were always pretty nice tape recorders, and, and the portable ones were. Uh, what else can we say? It's got a tape counter, which not all of them had. I had a Radio Shack one, which very well might have been a rebanded Panasonic that didn't have a tape counter. It has no meter, which means that it's got automatic gain control, which makes it essentially useless as a music recorder but very useful as a voice recorder. It's got a little electret mic on the front. On the side, we've got six volts in, a monitor, eight ohms, so it can drive um, a small speaker or say 16 ohm headphones reasonably enough. Um, and that operates in monitor mode. It's got a remote which allows you essentially to turn the motor on and off in whatever mode it's in, and it's got a mic input for an electric mic. Uh, nothing on the other side. So when I look at something like this, what do I look at? Well, first, is it really bashed up? I mean, not just rattling around in a box bashed up, but like really like plastic broken and whatnot. Because if the plastic's broken on it, the chances with a mechanical thing like this is that it's not in very happy shape. So then you've got to decide whether you want it to work or not. The next thing I look at is I look at something like into the mechanism and see is there any corrosion? What does it look like? 
And as you can see, there's some dust. You can see that the uh, nylon gear here has yellowed a bit. I don't know if that's going to show on the video. I'll try to move the light over a bit. Right, so in here too, in the eject, we have a little bit of yellow, but none of the steel in here has yellowed. There's the paper hasn't come up from the little window. It's interesting, it's got a white sticker on the background. A lot of early ones were mirrored, and I seem to remember a lot of them with red or orange stickers, sort of the same color as the record button. Um, I can see a belt here. So there is a belt on it, and on the tech tape players in particular, you can sometimes, so especially for, this one only goes in one direction. So there should be a clutch on this side, and there should be power on this side. So that means that if nothing is pushed, this might be a little stiff, but this should spin easily, which it does. If we press play, this actually has tightened up, so clutch is definitely been engaged, and this is now hard to turn to, which could mean a lot of things, but it could mean that in fact one of the belts, and I think this belt is probably for the uh, reverse, but it could mean that one of the belts is in fact fine, and this one looks okay. If it looks to be a size I have, if it's not. So that's looking fairly positive. The other things you could look at, again, hitting play again, you know, how dirty does the pinch roller look? You know, this one's been used, that's for sure. You can't really tell if there are any flat spots on the pinch roller, at least not in my view, just by looking at it. But you can hear if there's a flat spot on the pinch roller later on. Flat spots on the pinch rolls roller are mainly caused by leaving it in play or record and not having any batteries in it. So it's something that happens when they sit in a drawer after being not used. So that's pretty good. There's, it looks clean. It looks like it's been used, which is really not a bad thing for something like this. And uh, I, I tried the reset button on the tape counter, of course, because you have to. It worked. Um, so the next thing to do is look at the bottom, right? And see, you know, are the screws rusty? Sure, they're plated, but if you leave them in a damp place for long enough, they'll rust. And the chances are, if they're rusty, everything inside will be too. And finally, and this is the most important with all small electronics, is to have a look inside and see what the battery terminals look like. Has it been left with leaky batteries for a long time and these are all eaten up? That can be salvaged to some extent if the metal's still there by taking it all out and um, and uh, using vinegar or some other weak acid to get the remains of the alkaline battery guck off of it. And so there's a, some chance of fixing that up in one way or the other, but um, if it's too far gone, it will have gotten into the rest of it and may have damaged the electronics inside. You'll also see my tripod's in the way so I can't hold this straight. I'll zoom in a little bit. We've got Panasonic model number RQ2745, DC 6 volts, Matsushita Electric Industrial Company Limited, made in Japan. So the next step of this is going to be to put some batteries in here, which we have right here. Apologies as I put my arm through it. And then we'll see if we have a working device. Okay, so the battery's in. The plastic is in very nice shape. That foam is pretty well gone, but this rubbery foam, maybe it really is foam rubber, is, uh, is fine. The batteries don't rattle too badly. It's okay, so let's eject it and let's hit play. Nothing. Rewind. Nothing. Nothing. So, so you can see what I've done here before again. Hit play. Nothing. Hit rewind. Nothing. Fast forward. Nothing. Hmm. If you put a tape in it, does that change anything? Probably not. 
nothing. Okay, so let's double check that the batteries have been put in correctly. Always worth checking. Plus plus, and we'll hit. Okay, so we do have a repair video for you. And so that means I will stop this for today because I don't have time to do a repair on this today. And I will at some point in the future open this up and we'll see if we can get it fixed. If the problem is just power, then we're in business. And I will say the next step that I would probably take would be to see if I've got a 6 volt power supply around and put it in there and see if we have any luck with that. But lots of 5 volt power supplies of course. Got 12 volt power supplies. I'm not sure I've got a 6 volt easily available. So we'll leave that for another day. I am back here with the Panasonic um, cassette recorder and I was not able to find a 6 volt power supply. I don't appear to own one or if I do it's in use with something which I can't remember. So what I did is I used a cheap power bank. You have to use a cheap one or you don't get any power out with this sort of adapter and a uh, couple of alligator clips and went to the back. Now that was very interesting. Now, 5 volts may be a little bit insufficient for this thing, but it did do a couple of things. First, I could hear, and there's no way you would hear this over uh, with by me holding a mic up to it. I was able to hear a little bit of noise out of the speaker, and I think I could hear a motor running a bit. So I think that means that at the moment I would tentatively say that there are two things wrong with this tape deck. The first is that there, for some reason, isn't sufficient contact going on with the batteries here. There are a number of possible reasons for that. They don't look terribly corroded, but there is a little bit of corrosion on them. So that might be something to look at. And you can see I wrote no power with batteries on the very important piece of sticky tape on the bottom. Um, and the other thing is that the belts are very likely bad. So I brought a couple of sets of belts. These are point, um, point 0.7 millimeters and these are one, I believe. If you look inside here, there's one over there that looks, I don't know if that's going to be visible, but there's one in there, which seems fine, that goes to the rewind head. Uh, I'm not sure that's fine, but anyway, that appears to be one millimeter or close enough. So I'm hopeful of the ability to change the belts and I think the power situation will probably be obvious. It's, it's possible that these batteries aren't fitting in very well. I, I always get the feeling that batteries changed a bit between sort of the 70s, somewhere in the 80s they tended to get a bit like the sides here. I don't know, but you can see these are torn up from me attempting to use them in the Strauss radio, which which I was able to solve that problem. So we'll figure that out. So what I'm going to do for the moment is open it up. I'll try to get it centered here on the camera. We'll open it up. It's going to take a big screwdriver and, uh, and see what we can see. I wouldn't imagine the belts on this are going to be terribly difficult. Or maybe it's one size down from that. Yeah. Um, these come out rather easily, so I do kind of wonder if someone's been in here before. But it looks like we've got... that one was tighter. Yep. And that one too. Maybe it was just my imagination. It looks like we've got one, two, three, four, and five screws, so hopefully this will come. That one was tight. And again, no corrosion, except maybe on the battery, I'm sorry, on the screw that was in the battery compartment, just a little bit on the top there. If you compare it to one of these, you can see that it's a little bit corroded. So I do now wonder if there's been some battery leakage in there at some time or another. 
Anyway, let's attempt to get this opened up. I'm hoping there'll be no clips because there we go. Okay, so what have we got? We've got battery compartment. Okay, I see how that's working. I was looking at because I'm going right there. Two wires there, and I know is it actually three volts? But no, what they've done is they're using one of these red wires as coming around and connecting the positive on here to the negative on there. So that's because the batteries conveniently both go the same direction, which is a nice design feature, makes it easier to change the batteries. So I'm suspecting there's not really any problem with that. If there is, it'll be one of these solder points here. And what we've got here is we've got a fair amount of dirt and we've got a little circuit board, one IC. Oh, this lifts out. Okay, let's see what we got. That's the microphone there. Looks like the whole... Okay, and it's held by the speaker in here. That belt is one I don't have, but it appears to be okay. So I'm going to lift this board off, I think, rather than try to take this whole mechanism out. I'm well you know what before I do that I'm going to try to put some batteries in it again and see if we can do some diagnosis with this now that we can see oops let's put the batteries in like that oh, didn't stay in okay let's put the battery cover on to keep the batteries in place Okay, so let's hit play here. Okay, we've got power. There we go. Got it to stay down. Here, let me hold this down here so that you can hear. So we've got power. Whatever was causing us not to have power before was. Probably my problem. So I think this motor works. And I think the problem is this belt here. And that belt is a flat one, which I don't have. But we are going to try one of these instead. So let's put that back in place. Oop. I think that just pulled off completely. So now we've got to get at the belts here. Um, so I think we're going to have, so I, I suspect that maybe the only problem that we're going to have to deal with are the belts. So let's take off this circuit board here. And these do actually fit the, I'm sorry, these, the larger screwdriver. That's always with Phillips screws, the angle is slightly different depending on the, uh, the design. So sometimes they take a larger screwdriver than you think they do. Okay, so let's have a look here. So I really want to disassemble this as little as possible because this is getting into the lots of little pieces. So this looks like it comes off, but I see a spring here. Don't know what that does, but I am going to remove it with some care. Okay. All right, so we have the spring removed, so I'm going to try to take off this here so that I can get access to the belt below. I I think I'm pulling off the flywheel. It looks like it might be a bearing in there. We're getting into the old electronic smell. Oh yeah, so it is, I'm correct. So there's a, a bushing in there with some 
Duponet, which is pressed into this metal piece. So I'm going to take this belt off. And I don't have the right belt for this, so I'm going to measure that and see if I can get the proper one. But just for the moment, let's see what I've got here. And so sort of off camera here, I pulled out a bunch of belts and I'm just going to look for one that's about the right size or just a little smaller than that. And that's as close as I'm going to get. So let's put this one on here. You can see that it runs around this flywheel here like that. This is about the right size, it feels about right. And the problem is not being flat. It's got the fairly high potential of running off this flywheel. Okay, so we've now got a belt on here. Now underneath this, there's a belt that powers the, it looks like the fast forward. So let's get, oh, so this is the original one. Let's save that over there. And let's just take this pile of little ones over here. Let me just make sure I don't have this one. I do. I'm trying to treat it as a flat belt and therefore I don't want it twisted because it won't untwist if it's a flat belt. I just twist it. I'm not sure this is going to work. Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's put this back on like that. We've got two screws here. And that little spring. I didn't need to take the screws out of the board, I don't think. And then, and then we'll see if it works. Okay, so we've got those screws in. Let's get this spring back in place. Springs, I've got to say, always make me nervous, especially big ones like that, because you get the feeling that they're going to spring away at any time. Let's see what we got with this. Okay, so let's hold this in place. So I don't know, I'm off camera a bit. I don't know if you can see, we now have spinning and a variety of different, I'm doing something noises. So let's put this back in place. I think that'll work like that. Let me get some tapes and I'll be right back. So let's just test it a little bit first. So let's hit play. All right, we've got one belt working, but we don't have it this moving or that moving. So something is still rewind, same thing, Q. So we still don't have effective um, movement on the various pieces. So that means that it's not just this belt. There are other belts in there. Let's see what we got. So we've got this flywheel turning here. That's turning okay. Let's see how OK, 
okay, I'm actually seeing, let's see if I can show you this. That's turning and the capstan's turning. I think we might be working now. It might have been a question about getting everything totally seated and pushed down because these wheels here have friction sort of not belts around them but friction fits around them so that might be how they're working so let's put in a tape and see whether that gets us anywhere We have a working tape player. All right, so I'm actually going to make an attempt to put this back together properly, and then we'll test out and see what's working and what's not. I'll have to figure out how that works. Oh, that fits in there. Okay, that's fine. Um, it might be not having that in place that was the issue, but it looks like the replacement of the main belt has at least got it partly working. I'm not sure rewind is working in which case we'll have to go deeper. Okay, maybe I'll leave the screw out from the battery compartment for now. So let's just do these four. And I should say that's definitely not the right belt, but as long as it doesn't fall off, it should work. And then we'll consider getting a flat one. Rewind works. Q works. And so we'll get a little bit of... Okay, let's try eject. So, so far we have fast forward and eject. We'll play again. A little bit more rush here. This is, of course, the official cassette tape of this channel, which is Fly By Night. So a couple of things. The tape counter is working. And honestly, this sounds about as good as this style of tape recorder ever does. So we can try. All right, so we have a working tape recorder. Well, tape player. We haven't tried the recording part. So let's take this tape. We'll rewind it. This is a big waste of batteries to do this. Oh, let's stop. Let's do it here. Okay, so let's record. We'll set the counter to zero so we know where to come back for. And we will say, this is a test of a, I would say right around 1980 tape player and recorder and don't really have much to say about it, but um, this is a sufficient test of the record system. Okay, so we're up to about four on the counter. We'll rewind a little bit and we'll hit play. This is a test of a, I would say right around 1980 tape player and recorder and don't really have much to say about it, but um, this is a sufficient test of the record system. So there we go. It's working just fine. It would be nice to have the correct belt, but um, I will order one. This one is actually not in terrible shape. It's just a little bit hard and it's not sufficiently stretchy anymore. This is the tape. This is working just fine. There's nothing wrong with this, with this tape recorder. So I would like to say thank you for watching me as I 
made this rather easy repair on this tape recorder. I'm going to add this screw back in in the battery compartment and I'm going to get a set of flat belts making sure that I've got one about the right size so I can in fact open it up and put the correct belt in. But the, um, the square one that I've got in is working just fine for the moment. This is, as I said, having owned a tape player, a tape recorder of this, not quite this kind, but a similar one in the era and having used a lot of them, that's about as good as they are. That's, it's fine. It's a perfectly adequate voice recorder. It was, could use a head cleaning and whatnot, but uh, really it's as good as new. All right, thanks very much for watching. As I always say, I try to post these about once every week or two, so hopefully you enjoyed this one. I will say I don't know what was wrong with the cassette, with the, with the um, battery compartment when I tested it the first time. There's no problem now. I suspect maybe just wiggling around the batteries in there was sufficient to get it to uh, to get it to work and maybe it was just a little bit of uh, of corrosion just on the battery compartment so when i put this screw in i'm going to give them a good squirt with uh, with contact cleaner and hopefully that will take care of that problem you know it's 40 years old it's doing pretty well if all it needs after 40 years is a new belt Good stuff. Thanks again.